This one's one of the more painful exercises for me because I've got such bad arms from my bike crash. But uh, it's also incredibly fulfilling because uh, I get to still work my body even though I'm being tortured by it every day and being surrounded by every type of person. It's always invigorating, so it's cool. If you look when I do the exercise, you can see that one wrist is always hitting the bar because I've got a bowed, bowed arm from a really bad operation. And it's incredibly painful because I've got no cartilage on my wrist. I like joke with this one. This is like start my paramotor training because um, the pull start on my paramotor is a pain in the butt sometimes. So I think 20 kilos is probably enough to get my engine started, right? So even with no legs, you find the balance point. You know, it doesn't matter. And just pull start, start the lawnmower, start the lawnmower. <laughs> It kills you, it does. The burn is unreal. So that's a 10. What you don't see is what I feel when I do these sort of things. Like, it's really hard to explain unless you're me, but there's a level of being uncomfortable that is uncomparable to anything. Um, you'll see that my legs are hanging, which means it's pushing on my tendon and it's pulling on the base of the stump because of the motion. I have two holes at the back of my leg right now that are bleeding. And I have a split stump as well that starts to bleed if it goes under pressure. But no matter what, I come to the gym. I've been trying to lose weight, um, get my stomach you know, back in a bit. With my legs in so much pain, I can't do the runs at the moment. Um, I used to do run, I used to go on the, on the bike. But I'm waiting for my, my prosthetics, which uh, we've covered and uh, you'll be seeing soon. And the good thing, just because I'm an amputee, it doesn't mean I can't do anything and it doesn't mean you can't too. It just means you must adapt and overcome the situation. A person in a wheelchair can do their upper body if they have no mobility in their, in their waist to the, to the legs. The person who's had a stroke, there's always one side as a rule, one side of your body doesn't work. However, it does sometimes come back, but that's not the problem. You can still use one side, right? So what's the excuse not to use that side? Um, half, of, half of being me is the mental side, the training. You need to be advanced in your thinking. Um, I'm tired, no I'm not, I'm still gonna to go to work. No, I'm not, I'm gonna continue pushing myself. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna. Then it's, the negatives are not important. It's about being positive all the time. And what you've found on this journey that you've done with me is that there isn't really a negative side to my life because everything is positive. The fact that I'm still alive after a train run me over, that's positive. The fact that I can come to the gym, that's positive. The fact that I'm in pain and I'm being tortured by my legs, that is a positive thing. The reason why it's a positive thing is because I know that I can feel, I do have feelings. I'm not just this robot that pushes his limit. I'm actually able to feel, have sensation. It means that I, I still care about my body. I can feel my body. It means I need to, it means I feel everything. It means I feel love, I feel, there are feelings inside my heart, but the mentality of being me isn't always about the, the show that I have to give everybody. I mean, I want to make everybody happy. They're, they love to see me. They like to take selfies with me. Um, but that's just one part of my life. 
the most important part of my life is self-motivation. Anybody can, can motivate, motivate themselves. Anybody can feel free inside themselves. Anybody can advance their lives. Everybody can advance. Life, life is, is exactly what they said in that movie, Forrest Gump, right? Life's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. But I'll tell you what, I'm just one, I'm dairy milk. I'm the one that knows what I want. I know that I'm the one that knows what I'm gonna achieve. I'm gonna make hot chocolate with my, with my chocolate. I'm gonna eat the chocolate. I'm gonna be chocolate because I encapsulate what I want. At the moment, what you're seeing is me doing all, all my upper body work. At the moment, my legs are a little bit too painful to do some of the exercises I normally do. It doesn't mean I'm gonna quit them exercises. I've adapted my regime uh, for, for now. And um, basically, I'm working my arms because my arms are the most important thing. When you watch me do things, I'm always on my knees and I need to lift my body out of everything, like lift myself onto the toilet, uh, lift myself to have a shower, lift myself onto the bed, pick up my son, play with my kids. Um, I can achieve all the stuff I achieve by using my arms. So it's also a good thing to say, no excuses, right? If you're in a wheelchair, you can't walk. Don't use an excuse that you can't walk. There's always a machine that can do the work with you. Um, so I'm gonna work on my arms here. This is called uh, my tricep. It's like a tricep pro, uh, press. It's a very good exercise, um, does the muscles right here. And what that does is allows me to push up. See, I can push all my body up. So I'm going to set myself back. I don't want the bar to snap like that. That wasn't clever. At the moment, this is just 44 kilos, 97 pounds. It's not, I mean, I can take the whole machine, but it's, that'd be like showing off. I don't want to do that. I'm just here to train. The amount of uh, reps isn't always important. It's about, about making the muscle fibers work. Um, as a rule, you have fast twitch and low, low twitch muscle fibers. The combination makes you do daily life. So we try and work them the same way. That was my first set. Now I'll start my second set. So that's another set of 10. Don't forget what you see in here. Let me just reiterate this. This is the start of my life. And I'll work in here between 40 minutes to an hour, depending on how the traffic looks outside. Because my shop opens at nine and we have loyal customers. I don't wanna let them down, but I do that. So we've got 5.30, preparing my business. Seven o'clock, I'm in the gym. Nine o'clock, I'm selling burgers. Four o'clock, I go home. Five o'clock, I play with my kids. 5.30, we go to like a shopping center, take them for dinner. Eight o'clock, I put my kids to bed. Nine o'clock, I go to bed. My body doesn't have time to really recuperate, which is why the most important thing in my life, apart from my family, is my flying. What I love, about my life is that it's fully active as a, as a fully able disabled person i'm fully active i've got no excuses i've got none what excuse can i give for life i'm alive my poor downsy baby my son alfie we don't know how far in life he'll go we you know our down syndrome has many many complications my beautiful daughter ariana that died for me to live my life to the full is, is a testament to my belief that they're with me the whole time. And I would never dream of insulting my kid's memory by quitting my life. I've been tortured for a long time with life, with things that have happened. But the release that I get by being a paramotor pilot, paragliding pilot, um, makes everything I do here, everything I do at home, everything I do for work, damn achievable, right? It's, it's life. It, life is about taking what you've got, flipping it, 
to make it better for yourself. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks about. You know, you could have a disability, you might have the most basic injury, um, you might not be of amazing looks, you might be a big person. That doesn't mean nothing. That just means that you've got a place to start. You should be proud of what you are, totally proud of what skin you're living in. Um, if your mindset isn't there, what you have to do is make small challenges. Don't, don't tell the large person that they're gonna lose 10 kilos in a week. That's never gonna happen. What you can do is make a small progressive step every day of the week. I'm going to lose half a kilo by the first week, the second week another kilo. You've got no, no strength in your body. I'm going to lift up a five kilo weight. I'm going to lift up a seven kilo weight. I'm going to lift up a 10 kilo weight. Got no legs. I'm going to take one step. I'm going to take three steps. I'm going to take five steps. You're in a wheelchair. I'm going to push myself to the shops. I'm going to push myself around a, a big shopping center. I'm going to go to the park. If you feel that your face or your looks aren't impressive, I'm going to ignore the first person. I'm going to ignore the second person because you know what? I'm already beautiful. It doesn't matter. I am half a person. Everyone stares at me. Every single day they stare at me. Most people have got no manners and ask me the same damn question. Why have you got no legs? So you know what? It's not important. Does it change your perspective of whether I've got legs or not? Is it gonna change what you thought about me, why I lost my legs? It's irrelevant. You don't have to ask anybody a question of why they are what they are. They are what they are and that's it, they're beautiful already. The most important thing is just to live and love life. I'm here to be me. I'm not here to live for anybody else. I'm here to live for my, my children. Don't care. I really don't care what people think about me. I can't beat what they are. I can't beat how they think. But I can beat what I am. So you just see me do my arms and then obviously I need to work on the parts that are not so strong, which are my legs. This to me is the most torturous moment of training. Um, this is where I open cuts and um, get sores and rubs. But it's not for the show, this is reality. I do this every damn day. Um, because without it, my legs won't be strong enough for training. Uh, so, you'll see what it's like to do um, this exercise and one other exercise. And then afterwards, I'm gonna show you the result of pushing my body to its limit. In fact, with my legs at the moment, it's past its limit. We're now on, I have a pain scale like they do in hospital. They say one to 10. And right at this moment, I would say I am borderline 10. The actual um, pressure that I'm under right now to, to do this exercise is ridiculous um, because the leg during the training session will rub because I have these silicon socks. But if I was to quit, and not complete my, my, my exercise regime. I haven't let anyone else down but myself. I'm not being trained in, by anybody. I'm being trained by my head. So the way we do this is to fight on, push, our, push ourselves. Achieve what we set out to achieve without excuses. I could use the most incredible excuse ever, I'm in pain. But I'm in pain every day of my life. Since the age of seven, I've been tortured by my body. Since the age of 20, I've been an amputee. Since the age of 20, I've lived with pain for 24 seven. That isn't an excuse, my wife would say it. I wake up in the night with my body and my legs shaking. The torture when my, my muscles and my nerves don't work together um, creates this horrible, toxic environment for my body. But the next day I'll still come back. The next day I'll still train. The next day I'll still work. The next day I'll still go fly. The next day I'll still pick my children up. The next day I'll still play with my son. The next day I'll still love my wife. Nothing changes just because I'm disabled. Because I'm not disabled. I'm just an amputee that can do everything I set out to achieve. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna push myself again because my limits need to be beaten. 
and that's how we do this. So enjoy. I'd like you to see what it looks like at the back of my leg when I do this exercise, because what it will show you is the break points that I have in my body um, with the silicon and with the prosthetic. But the whole thing works together. And uh, hell, no feet, no defeat. Let's get on with it, eh? Legs on and a push. This is my most painful leg. <clears throat> it ain't even an excuse, it really is f***ing hurting. <laughs> it does bloody hurt, man. Right now, here, the swollen up. You see the, the crease. So this is swelling. If I stand straight, my knees are now swollen up. And if I put myself side onto the camera, you can see that my knees outweigh both sides of the socket. So basically I'm torturing my, my, my joints at the moment and they're trying to fix themselves. So now we have the, the, the faded zones here. You can see they're right on my knee joint. This is because of the swelling. These white socks are spacers. They're supposed to fill your socket out. But right now, well actually my leg's filling it out itself. But now it becomes padding instead. And this fading is where my knee's been rubbing during the exercises. And as you can imagine, it hurts. But I can't quit. It's not in me to quit. I don't believe in quitting. I believe in doing what I set out to do. I believe I need to achieve what I set out to achieve. The exercises are here because I need to do them. Not just because I need to show you. I need to be able to keep flying. <clears throat> right now, it's no longer borderline 10, it's nearly borderline 11. You probably see from my face now, but I'm about my limit. This isn't exhaustion. Exhaust, this is heavy breathing, but it's not exhaustion. This is now controlling the pain in my head. My knees right now are actually throbbing a bit. But it doesn't help me to quit. It doesn't help. I mean, in reality, you could actually argue with me and there would be a really good argument that maybe you're doing the wrong things, you're doing it too much. But my body's telling me what I need to know, not what you see. My mind has told me I'm not, not finished. Legs are a powerful, powerful area of your body. We need them when we walk. The same as I need them when I fly. Everyone tells me to use a thing called a trike when I fly. I've tried it and I hated it because it didn't torture me enough. It's uh, not sadistic. I'm not a sadist. I'm a realist. We get an injury, we have to rest it. I'm not injured. I'm an amputee. There's a difference. My muscles aren't hurt. My muscles aren't, it's the skin. The skin around my leg. The skin is the largest organ on your body and it's always breaking down. My legs, inside my sockets, the level of breakdown is about five times faster than a normal person's body breakdown. Because I have no oxygen, no air getting to the stump. The sweat stays there. I can use a cream, but the cream makes it slimy and the cream after a while gets all disgusting and stinky and I don't want to use that. So, I carry on whatever I'm doing. No matter what consequence I'm having, right? Because the pain is only a pain until I stop being painful. And I'm never gonna stop being in pain by the look of it. 20, 23 years, 23 years I've been like this and I have yet to have a day without pain. You tell me, is it worth quitting for 23 years? I don't. 23 years I've been like this and I have yet to have a day without pain. 
So I'm gonna give my legs a rest now, just for one exercise. And this is one of my favorite exercises because um, I was always, always had a really strong stomach. Even though I'm a bit chubby, inside there actually is a six pack. Most of the time it's just beer. So this is uh, basically the stomach exercise where you're doing sit-ups, but you're already sitting up. What there is on this one is a pull on my leg because I must put my foot under here and now it's a new, new position for my body. When I do the exercise, you'll see the pull on my stump. Set number two. <laughs> okay so we're at the final final part of my my morning routine um this one i always wait until the end because this one is the most excruciatingly painful torturous exercise i have to do and it's got nothing to do with the amount of weight i lift just the damn foot position everything on this setup if i get it wrong it can put me out for days. I can't bend my legs like normal people. So I have to see first of all, which, which position suits me for today. If my legs are painful from yesterday, maybe there's another inch difference. So we test, I think already I'm wrong. Let's have a look, yeah, see. So we're gonna put it back a bit more. He says, I've got to do it myself, there we go. Try that one. Okay, right, so I have to lift with my hands. My leg. <clears throat> Look, all that process just to do that one thing, push it to there so I can get my comfort zone. And then I lift my shorts, not because I want to see my underwear. I need to check my knee line with my muscles as well. So we do the routine. I can lift a lot more weight than this, but my prosthetic legs I'm making a funny noise today and I'm not going to just exaggerate an exercise just because of a camera but the exercise still works so I'm trying to work my muscles here so I can do my running takeoffs I can do my landings more comfortably and the weight of the paramotor is not this weight 50 kilos the weight of the paramotor is a lot less so it just allows a little bit more play a little bit of repetition I'm trying to find new position because my knee's cracking. Now we're at 12 out of 10. We're way over my pain threshold. It is torture. I've had kidney stones, I've had my appendix out. But the pain in my stump, it's a sharp, like you're standing on glass pain. I like needles. Every time the pressure's on it, the needles dig in. It's a level. It's not the exercise that hurts. It's a stump. Normally I'd put the foot plate back for my rest. Instead, I'm hyper extending my knee. And you can see here now, my knee's at the ultimate swelling point, which proves what I've just been saying. That's it, it's all fluid. But I can use one leg, lock it in place, and I can rest one. Get the blood back in the stump, switch it over, lock it, and do the same. Then go again. Here we go again. One, two, 
so it starts, after two reps, it starts to kick in again. Ah, bitch. We're finished. That's the end of my limit. I'm done. All right, watch yourself. Three, two, one. Let's get one leg off. There we go. This is my morning workout routine before I go to work and stand up all day selling burgers in 40 degree heat. Before I go home and walk in a shopping center for my children. Before I take them to eat dinner. Before I go to the bank. Before I go home to bed and repeat it the next day. I hope you've enjoyed my experience in here showing you what um, you can do regardless of the circumstances. I hope I've given you an insight into my life. I hope that you've seen my routine and can associate at least one part of your life with it. I hope that you've enjoyed my journey. And I think most importantly, you remember that it's just life. We can all make excuses to be alive, but actually living, actually breathing, actually doing, you've already won. You've already beaten life. You're a winner every damn day. But the difference is being a winner or being a champion. To be a champion, you've just got to set yourself one simple goal and achieve it. And I'll give you one thing that I want to point out that is really important to me. It doesn't matter if you never reach that goal. You'd still be a champion because it is better to try and to fail than to actually fail to try. The journey with me is almost over and I really hope that what you've seen, what you've watched, what you've heard will in some way give you a kick or will give you some general feeling. And uh, if it hasn't, you've got my love. And if it has, let's work on this together. You're more than welcome to follow me. Um, my journey is always online. You can just type my name in or Amp Pew Flyer. But we win this as a family, we win this as a team. Life is one big, big exercise. Okay, so we've finished it today in the gym. I've done, I think, 50 minutes. Oh, it is actually an hour today. Um, I thought it'd be really cool for you to see the, the torture, the end result, and um, the issues that follow this. So I'm going to show you the most extreme stump and I'll show you the one that is always less painful. So the most extreme first. Obviously prosthetic, just click it, take it off, saves load hassle. There's my pressure points, all the same area every time. Then as we go down, there's the knee point, the pressure point on my knee. And you can look, the stump split just here. The bruising, you can definitely see the color of the bruising. This is because I'm bottoming him out. I put my stump all the way through and the bone, so it pushes really hard. And then the back of my leg, I have these awful holes that I hope they come out clearly. They're basically mini abscesses that connect each other and become an elongated hole. And uh, it basically, for a normal person, a cut can take you know a couple of days to start to shut but these will now take me around two months because I don't have time to take my legs off and rest them. So as you can imagine, um, every time I go to bed, they may be shut a tiny bit, but when I wake up, they tend to reopen. And you can see from the scarring that it's a regular occurrence. It's a big scar that goes all the way along. There's not much I can do about that. And then this is my kneecap issue where my knee dislocates and it's caused me loads of problems. So I end up with this horrible area, horrible area too.
doesn't matter. It just proves that I'm still living. I can feel it. I'm just alive. So the first one, that's the bad one. The one that gives me the most grief. So I'm just going to put my leg back on because we want to keep my balance so I don't fall off the chair and create another injury. So I just put my balance back. There we go. And I should be locked in. There we are, I'm locked in. And then stump number two, different feeling. The swelling already you can see from the top because the, the side, the line's there, means I've had pressure. Same, same thing you see on my so socks, you see? There's all the pressure points I use. The coloring, discoloration is the pressure points and here's the swelling starting. And again, there's a split start. They've had old splits, new splits. Um, I've got a horrible thing here that um, this is actually incredibly painful. Um, it's like a pressure point and it's scarred over. And this is one that feels like glass. It is very painful. And you see here, the, I can't see from there, but I can tell around this point, I've got an issue about to open up, will be some sort of bleeding soon. And the circular uh, bruise, again, because of bottoming out. And this color, which I'd like to show here, in the bottom of that, you see, this is white. This is actually old blood. What happens is when I walk all day, the blood will sink into the sock. I can't do anything about that. It is what it is. I'm not dirty. It's just I can't get rid of it. Um, it's actually time to, <laughs> time to replace my socks now. Uh, a massive cost and my prosthetic too. These prosthetic legs are an absolute fortune and they're at the end of their limit. I've actually got sounds coming out of these now, so I'm gonna have to replace them. And uh, that means I have to work even harder, which means this whole process goes on and on and on. However, I'm not complaining. Why would I complain about life? I'm alive. There's nothing to complain about. It's just happiness. So I am gonna take my bottles. I'll hide them under my arms because I've got a bag to carry over my shoulder and go sell some burgers and make some more people happy by eating my food. Good day. Kai kamoi lot. Sen yang. Okay. Bai kai kong. Hao, mo sai ma. Eh. Eh, no. Seven.